What is going on guys? Coach Joe, Office De La Swole. And in this video, we are going to be talking about my crazy hair. Just kidding. My hair is crazy because we just had our baby boy delivered on Sunday evening. And man, am I on cloud nine. Being a father is the biggest and most important accomplishment outside being a great husband in my entire life and truly is my purpose on this earth. So I just want to say thank you to everybody that's reached out. If you saw it on social media, uh, but if you didn't, now you know, I am a father. We have joined the dad gang. Back to the point of this video, we are going to be talking about ways to maintain as much muscle as possible while doing a body recomposition or a cut, okay? So as you guys know right now, I have been doing a fat loss slash recomp phase. Started off right around 280 pounds and this morning I was 258 pounds. So. You can see some pictures of what I look like now. Definitely getting a little bit more shredded up. And my main goal of this is to find a new body weight. Uh, well, cumulatively, I've been putting on muscle for years. So we want to kind of decrease the body weight a little bit, see how much muscle we have under the hood. And I actually want to hold that for a good bit of time, which is just kind of in sync with the goals that I have right now and how my life has been working out with obviously being very busy. Now I have a kid, uh, so I'm just trying to basically be lean, mean, and a strength machine while holding on to that father figure and not getting a dad bod. So once again, I wanna give you guys five sound principles with one added bonus that I'm gonna be using myself, that I use with my clients, and the people that I coach when they're in a fat loss phase or a body recomposition phase to hold as much muscle on the skin suit as possible. The first tip right off the bat is going to be to prioritize protein. And I must say, from all the athletes and clients that I worked with, the number one macronutrients that I see is definitely a lot lower than it needs to be is protein intake, and especially for women. But let's talk about the why, okay? Why do we want more protein or enough protein, especially when we are in a calorie deficit and we are losing weight? Well, the reason for that is that protein is the foundation building block for muscle and protein synthesis. Now, there's a lot of mixed science on this on what you should be consuming with what your body weight is. Now, I'm going to keep this very simple and kind of give you a little bit of a range, right? So that range is going to be anywhere from uh, 1.6 to 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. And if you're using pounds, it's going to be 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound that you weigh. Now, having done a lot of body recomposition and fat loss phases, I've been anywhere in that 0.7 to 1 gram of protein per pound that I weigh. And I have found that for me, I just like that safety net of just shooting for that 1 gram per pound. It's very easy to follow. Not much math is required. And my physique does seem to look better when I have a slightly higher protein intake. And if I'm going to go over in any of the macros, protein is typically the one that I'm comfortable with doing. So make sure you're getting your protein intake in. That's very important for a lot of reasons. And I would even say more so for women, especially as we get older. Now, the second big one you all should be doing this is strength training or resistance training. To be honest, not much needs to change with your training. If you're in a body recomposition phase or in a fat loss phase, and a lot of people think I need to totally switch up my training and I would say just keep doing what you're doing until it's no longer working or you're not getting the desired results and then we can maybe change some variables. But I'm of the rule of keeping it super simple, okay? I don't wanna be making all these different adjustments. It's overwhelming, it's hard to keep track of. So keep as many variables consistent and concrete as possible and then only make slight and small adjustments when you need to. Now, why do we do this, okay? When we're doing resistance training, it's actually sending signals to our body to continue to build and preserve muscle. So it's very important that you keep doing that. And what I found, the two biggest client profiles that can still gain a lot of muscle while losing fat is gonna be beginners, right? Or if you're in that beginner slash intermediate phase, you have a high chance of still putting on size while losing fat. And you can see that maybe the scale isn't changing so much, but you can visibly see the recomposition that's taking place with that client's body. The second client profile is going to be people who are overweight or have a lot of fat. And what we see there is that we are losing a significant amount of fat, especially early on, and we are also building muscle. So if you kind of blend those two client profiles together, you really have a great recipe for an awesome body recomposition. Now, like I said, I wouldn't change much about your training. So if you're doing strength training, keep rocking that. If you're doing hypertrophy training, keep on doing your thing. However, I like to kind of blend the two together. So I always have some sort of big compound lifts throughout the week. And then I do have accessories that are gonna be more voluminous and kind of in that higher rep range, which gives me just that more hypertrophy-based response. 
I would recommend at least training three to five times per week if you want the best results. Somewhere kind of being in that four to five is where you're probably gonna find the best results. At the same time, you got to do what you can with the schedule and the restrictions that you have. But minimally, get in the gym three times per week, probably with a full body split, and you can still get great results. Now the third tip for keeping as much muscle on as possible while we're doing this fat loss or recomp is going to be getting into a calorie deficit, but not too aggressive. And I think that's where a lot of people go wrong is they just cut tons of calories. And yes, you do lose a lot of weight very fast, but I find, and what the research shows is people have a slightly longer duration or timeline for that cut where we're doing smaller chunks of deficits. So instead of maybe going to 800 to 1,000 calories, which is pretty drastic. I like starting at 250 to maybe 500 calories at most. And what that's gonna allow us to do is still get the results of the weight loss, but it's gonna be easier on our system and also on our brain. We do see a lot of crash dieting where people are taking those drastic calorie jumps, you know, burning a ton of fat, but then what we see is easy come, easy go. They get a month or a month and a half in and they're burnt out physically, they're burnt out mentally, and then all of a sudden we start binge eating. So if we can lengthen that timeline a bit and make it a little bit more slow and consistent, not only will your body thank you, but your mind will thank you as well. On top of that, if we go too drastic with our calories, there's a chance that we could potentially be burning and losing muscle uh, when obviously that's not the case, okay? So take it slow and steady, keep as much muscle as possible, and it's gonna just be a lot better in the long run. When it comes to the rate of fat loss, a good rule of thumb is gonna be anywhere from half a pound to a pound per week. I think anything more than that uh, is just gonna be too drastic, not to say that in the first couple weeks, we have a lot of changes going on in the body. We also have water retention that we're getting rid of. So take it week by week, and if you're seeing as the weeks go on, you're still losing over a pound per week, maybe add a little bit more calories to find that sweet spot. Tip number three on my list is gonna be ensuring that you are getting adequate rest and recovery. We are now actually taking out calories, so our body doesn't have as much energy, which makes recovery and sleep all that more important. As you guys know, when we are training and we're going after it in the gym, that's actually not where the growth occurs, okay? The growth happens when you're outside of the gym, uh, hours later, or even when you're sleeping, okay? That's when the muscle is rebuilding itself and we are growing. So it's important that you guys have good sleep routine and throughout the day when there's times that you can give a little bit more recovery to the body, I would highly recommend that. On top of that, try to limit your stress as much as possible. Obviously, stress is regularly occurring, right? We have good stress and we have bad stress, but we wanna limit that chronic or potentially negative stress so that we're not releasing tons and tons of cortisol, which can be negatively impactive on growing more muscle. I try to shoot for seven to nine hours on average uh, of sleep per night. Now, like I said, once again, your schedule, figure it out. I'm a new dad. It's probably not gonna be seven to nine hours, but I am taking more naps throughout the day, which kind of helps aid where I'm losing out of because I can't have a solid night's sleep. Now, number four on my list, it is not the number one or the biggest one by any means. It is important, but don't lose sleep over it. And that's going to be consuming carbohydrates around your workouts. So when we are in a calorie deficit, the biggest macronutrient variable that I like to play with is going to be my carbohydrates. So I have my set protein within that range that we had talked about previously. My fats for me is just enough to maintain my hormonal function uh, and just keep my body working and feeling the way it should. And then carbohydrates is gonna be the one that I'm dropping, uh, but it is also equally important because carbohydrates are our primary fuel source for training and everything else that we do. They're gonna maintain performance, they're gonna maintain strength, and once again, it is that primary fuel source of energy. So if we're cutting them down, it's best to place those carbohydrates when they're gonna be needed the most, which would be training and intense activity or exercise. So typically my rule of thumb when it comes to my carbohydrates is I'll take 60% of the carbohydrates that I have for the day and I'll roughly take 30% of them pre-workout and then 30% post-workout. Now maybe that's gonna be a 20 and 40 split depending on when I'm training. Maybe I don't need them or feel like I need them as much pre or post, but roughly it's always gonna be around 60% of my total carbohydrate within uh, that training window pre and post. And once again, we do wanna use those because when we're training, that is the primary fuel source. So it makes the most sense to me to get my carbohydrates in around my training so that I have the energy to train mentally, physically, I'm locked in, ready to go, uh, and the body can start repairing itself and we can keep growing that tissue while being in a deficit. Now the last one on my list is going to be start walking more and tracking your steps. 
And there's a big debate over how much cardio you should be doing, whether you're a bodybuilder or you're doing a fat loss or recomposition phase. And that's gonna depend on person to person. Obviously health is a main priority here. So you wanna make sure that you're getting enough cardio and proper intensity with cardio so that you're taking care of your health and all the other systems in the body uh, cardiovascularly. But outside of that, if we can start increasing our activity level throughout the day and by doing things like low intensity steady state or list training, that's gonna be burning tons of calories without putting out a ton of effort on our end. And what I found in the past, and this is anecdotal, when I was doing weight loss or fat loss phases and I was pushing my cardio really hard, I was also increasing my appetite like crazy and typically burning more muscle uh, than I would like to. So. Be aware of that. If you guys are starting to see that you're in that deficit and you're going hard with your cardio, you may offset the calories you're losing by eating because your appetite gets spiked throughout the day. So you may kind of end up you know, calling it a wash per se. Um, so by doing things like increasing my activity, whether that's yard work or going for walks after every meal or just trying to be a little bit more active, uh, you're gonna be in a better position to keep yourself satiated with your appetite and also not just fatiguing yourself like crazy where you're, you're slowing down that recovery process. And some of the best cases, you may be actually able to lose weight by eating the same amount of food you have in, but just increasing that activity level. And a good rule of thumb that we always hear is 10K steps per day. I think that's very reasonable and anecdotally and evidence uh, has shown that that is enough steps to have a healthy heart, okay? Getting a lot of blood flow, getting your calories up high, uh, and also potentially start losing weight. Outside of that, it helps with digestion. So I like to have a meal and then go for a five or 10 minute walk after every meal. I just find that my belly feels better and I'm processing those macronutrients and micronutrients a lot better because I'm getting blood flow to the digestive system. And mentally as well, it's nice because you're getting outside, you're getting some fresh air, you're once again putting more blood flow to the brain. So mentally there are a lot of benefits as well. And once again, it's not draining or energy costing uh, and super fatiguing that we are impaired for our regular training, which is typically the main priority uh, when we are in these phases. So that's pretty much all I have guys. I just wanted to give you some of the protocols and pillars that I use when it comes to certain phases of my training. And right now we are in, like I said, a body recomposition phase. So these are some of the tenets that I stay tried and true to and the athletes that I have and work with. I'm you know, talking to them about this stuff and they find that they're getting great results. So don't make it too complicated. You can kind of have paralysis by analysis with this stuff, uh, but if you stick to the basics, the basics work, and then we can fine tune some of the little variables, but we don't want to do that all at once, okay? So get consistent with it first, see what the data is showing, and then we can play with a little bit of variables one at a time and keep this to be a relatively pain-free process, okay? I'm not a bodybuilder who's getting on stage. I'm not going to push myself to drastic degrees for this. This is a slow and steady process for me to get to a new body weight uh, with the amount of muscle tissue that I've accrued over the last couple years. Hold that, let my body adjust so that we don't have a rebound effect where I just start eating like crazy again, my weight starts shooting up. This is slow and steady to build the proper habits and behavioral changes needed so I can maintain this. And then when the time comes, I can either you know, slightly increase my calories to put on some more size, or I can stay there and maintain it. Or if I want to, you know, I can then start losing some more weight. But I find slow and steady is what wins the race. So if you guys like the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you have questions, drop them down below. I love interacting with you guys. And once again, we just had a child, so I'm gonna be home and I'll be interacting more probably from the home office. Uh, but on top of that, if you guys want any programming or coaching, links are down below in the description. We have a la carte programs, we have one-on-one -on -one remote coaching, all that good stuff. So check it out. We love the support that you guys have uh, for the channel and not only the channel, but my family. Uh, but until then, guys, stay a lean, mean, strength machine. I'll catch up with you next time. Peace.